Welcome, folks, uh, to Destiny Digest. I believe it's 79. Uh, this is the final shape anticipation bracket uh, in which I have asked the general public to rate their top uh, or the top 10 out of 30 changes that we knew of coming to Destiny 2, the final shape. Uh, I asked that in a Google form, and out of we had like 45 people answer that and so all of these are aggregate aggregated out of here uh for those of you who are sticklers for data everything got a revenant bump uh because revenant voted in the form before i limited it to 10 uh options I'm per down. person via the form so everything gets a revenant bump of one um just so you know uh before we get into our conversation about all the things that are coming in the final shape why don't we go around the horn here and uh, have you guys introduce yourselves and tell folks uh, what you do on the internet. Let's start with the D Flawless. Hello, my name is D Flawless. Um, I'm a family friendly streamer, entertainer on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, you can catch me streaming a few days a week. It's pretty sporadic these days, but we're looking to get more consistent. Uh, we play D&D on Thursday nights with Captain Robert and a bunch of cool folks. Uh, other than that, I'm on Twitter posting videos, TikTok, doing the thing. You may have seen something, but yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, True Vanguard, what about you? Yeah. Welcome, welcome for your first time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ryan TV. Uh, I do both gaming and whiskey channels on YouTube, and then I stream sometimes, usually a few times a week on Twitch as well. So primarily focusing on Destiny these days, but also doing on some variety stuff as well. Had a lot of fun today and yesterday with the launch of X Defiant, which is a fun yeah. little art, free-to-play arcade shooter as well. So yeah, that's about it. Perfect. Pidge, uh, how's your voice holding up? It's, it's all right, man. I'll hold it down. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, guys, if I haven't met you before, my name is Pigeon. I'm your resident Scotsman, uh, focused primarily on Destiny 2 content via Twitch, uh, thriving on lots of chaos, which leads to my voice breaking the way it has just now. Um, for those that know me, yeah, lots of laughs involved. Hope you can stop by. Well, thank you guys once again for being on the stream. Uh, and on the podcast before we get started on the bracket um just gonna test the waters here how have you guys been feeling about um the past i would say couple months of destiny 2 with into the light uh d starting with you um i've been really excited in the lead up um as kind of hands off as i've been recently with with destiny i've been popping in here and there the little bits of news that i have been getting uh via twitter seeing the excitement catching the updates when i can i'm super hyped but admittedly i'm very easy to please when it comes to destiny <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just we're gonna say that at the outset dan you know this about me it doesn't take yes. much to, to to make me happy with destiny <laughs> <laughs> i think one of my favorite tiktoks of yours in recent memory is the um we gave you cake <laughs> <laughs> yeah i that like one, cake <laughs> yeah i like cake yeah you you enjoy cake you're very easy to please on that front and you've been playing a lot of variety stuff uh, like as uh, as well as life things popping up so that's completely understandable um uh tv what about you yeah, Into the Light's been honestly a lot more engaging for me than I expected it to be because I'm primarily a PvP, almost exclusively PvP guy. I uh, consider my PvE to be like, it's your veggies. You got to eat your vegetables, just get them out of the way and then go enjoy your meat and your dessert. And that's PvP stuff for me. So I do my PvE stuff every week that I need to. And that's about it. But Into the Light has been really refreshing. I do, I do really enjoy Onslaught and um, you know chasing all the shinies and the specific roles I want. I think they did a great job with the perks pools on those mm -hmm. weapons. So as a PvP player, I really felt compelled to go in there and chase these things. And then obviously that makes me full circle, go back into PvP, try them out. And uh, that's been great. And obviously the new map pack has been a godsend for us PvP enthusiasts. It's been a lot of fun to be able to play the game we love in new spaces for the first time in a very long time mm -hmm. uh, outside of like a, a map here and there. So I think uh, overall I'm feeling pretty 
uh, you know, positive towards the final shape. Mm-hmm. It, we are in a long season, though, in PvP. Sometimes, sh- not sometimes, it pretty consistently shows, uh, you know, its age in this season in that regard with smaller player pools. We've got a lot of playlists right now and a small player pool. So everyone's running to all these different corners of the Crucible. So you can deal with long queue times and bad connections still pretty consistently. But I'm feeling hopeful that the final shape will infuse the PvP experience with a, a new wave of players to keep things functioning properly. Pigeon, what about you? Yeah, uh, it's actually interesting here on TV sites because I'm obviously primarily a PvE player. So the content update has been super refreshing and um, having all these, well, nostalgic bits of Luke come back, which I think is the thing that's hot home for me the most, like feeding on that nostalgia, having played the game since it came out. Um, it's been a lot of fun in streams. There's been a lot of interest in getting teams together, tackling the challenges, like the Onslaught activity. Uh, more recently, the Pantheon has drawn a lot of interest as well. Yeah. As as we know, that's been it's been getting incrementally harder each week, and this week was the, what was basically the finale difficulty. Um, just really exciting times, like being able to play Destiny at that sort of end game level uh, with the content update, uh, using all the loot that we've gathered as well from mm-hmm. like doing the onslaught and stuff and picking up the the brave quests and stuff. Also, that shiny chase, that shiny chase hit was oh yeah, <laughs> like wow, <laughs> that a lot of people related to related it to Pokemon cards. Um, yes, yeah. For me, intrinsically, it it called back to like the Forsaken era when you were getting the <clears throat> curated rolls. Uh, the, those were like the original Destiny Two shinies, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been a big a big rush as well, like uh, chasing that stuff down, get involved with mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I've been really enjoying the content so far. Uh, week three Pantheon kicked my ass until about Monday <laughs> Monday night. Um, how how uh, Pidge? I know that you did pan- this week's Pantheon. Like, how are you feeling uh, about the difficulty spike there? Do you feel like it was do- doable with a yeah, loose group um, or with a with a more concerted first day group? So, well, full disclosure, um, I've been running with the team that will be my final shape day one raid team and we are quite a bunch of enthusiastic guys when it comes to like the competitive end game so we've actually been practicing on a weekly basis where we're checking out the encounters before they get released in their pantheon format so we kind of had it rehearsed to an extent mm-hmm. yeah but, um this week definitely threw a spanner on the works like with the difficulty spike and what we're used to practicing in um we got it done eventually, but we definitely had a few snags on the way. So that was quite eye-opening, quite interesting to, to have the game kind of push back at that level. Humbling, you're like, yeah. Wow. You're like, wow, yeah, humbling exactly. So yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Um, TV and D, have you guys been able to dive in at all for for any Pantheon stuff? Does it interest you at this at this late stage in the game when it comes to it? I've been when I've had time to play, I've been doing what the shiny hunt pitch talked about. Um, I'm trying to get the perfect Luna's how, because that is my favorite hand, you know, non-exotic hand cannon, but mm-hmm. let's be honest, it's really an exotic. Um, so I've been doing that. I haven't touched Pantheon yet, but I am itching to do it because I do love difficult raid content. So mm-hmm. one of these days I'll hump, uh, jump in, but if I'm not mistaken, it's going away soon. So I don't have yeah. a whole lot of time to uh, do it. <laughs> Yeah, you bas- basically a little less than two weeks now um, to do all four difficulties if you're going for the God Slayer title. If you're yeah, not, so then we'll... you can kind of hop into the mix on a couple of the lower end ones or whatever. I'm going to have to get some of my uh, some of my good PVE gamer friends to help me out. <laughs> That's right. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. I have not played Pantheon yet, primarily because of I, I just haven't. End game PVE stuff just for the challenge of it has never really been my thing. End game mm-hmm. PVE content for the loot uh, and the fun, yes. Mm-hmm. Like I always do my day one raids and all that stuff, and and I'll knock all that stuff out when I need to just to get everything checked off my list. But Pantheon, it just I'm not the demographic for it, but yeah. I think it's super cool that it's a thing, and I know a lot of my PVE friends are just living it up in there, and I think that's awesome. Heck yeah! Are there any weapons? out of the um out of into the light 
that you feel are like head and shoulders above the rest uh, going into the final shape. In either PvE or PvP or PvE or PvP, I have a mix of both <laughs> both kinds of people here. So why yeah, not? <laughs> in PvP, Luna Sal is exceptional. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's uh, already got a pretty strong presence in what is you know the community that's left playing PvP is usually at this point in the season. It's mostly just the people that love pvp right mm -hmm. and among that kind of player there's a lot of lunas owls in these lobbies so people are really vibing with it and um blast furnace as well that consistent two burst potential in pvp makes it um you know obviously it's got things like rapid hit zen moment head seeker there's all these things that just make it a really consistent easy to shoot two burst uh kill weapon so that's been pretty popular as well i'm going to jump in right in there um i am absolutely loving the changes to mountaintop and this mm -hmm. is not even like as a this is a meta pick or it's going to be strong in the final shape. It's just stupid fun to use, like having like a I don't know how to describe it. It's like a sniper shotgun in PVE. You can use it at range, you can use it up close, and then you can use it to do the whole sort of uh, grenade jump effect uh, around the map, which I'm, I just love. It's just stupid fun. Um, I picked up a role that I, I think is a sleeper pick. Uh, it's got Impulse and Vorpal on it. Mm -hmm. And I can you can just turn out with it. And it's, uh, it's still pretty effective as well. So, um, But yeah, just the utility and like jumping about with it is just so much fun. That's, that's, that's like my favorite thing. This came in the event. <laughs> I think I saw the video of you using it to launch yourself across the room. Or was that Fool? Oh. I think that might have been Fool. Oh yeah, they were <laughs> yeah, we were uh, sticking grenades to the wall and then launching through where you're meant to dunk the spark. And uh, the, the most recent one I did after that was it was in a gambit game. I was mm -hmm. on like a celestial nighthawk hunter. So as the primeval was getting the immunity down, I hit a, a mountaintop jump and I went so high up in the air, cast my super, and then got the <laughs> final hit on the the prime evil it was just Love chef's it. kiss it was such a great clip yeah like just styling like that it's just it's hilarious it's fun yeah what are you guys most looking forward to uh out of the final shape so uh for <laughs> me yeah i'll just <laughs> I, I don't mind sorry i don't mind sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um just that sense of discovery again you know mm -hmm. um it seems like it's really gonna like put us in a like it seems like an all new sandbox. Recent uh, releases kind of felt like new stuff. Same sandbox. Seems like we're gonna get a whole new sandbox um, with like the the different subclasses. And I know we'll talk about that later. But mm -hmm. um, the prismatic subclasses, I'm really excited for. Uh, that's probably the thing I'm most excited for. Just seeing how crazy they let us get with those combinations because I definitely have some ideas in mind um, and just seeing what new, you know, what new stuff they throw at us, new enemies, new weapons, you know, new ways, new encounters. Um, hopefully it's uh, not just some a different variation of uh, stand on a plate, throw a ball, but you never know. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about you, TV? For me, definitely just being and being able to look forward to the way that the final shape is going to change the way that I actively play the game. And it does that mm -hmm. in, a, in a wide variety of ways. Uh, new exotic armor pieces that do interesting things. Uh, new exotic weapons that, that change the way that you approach firefights and engagements. Uh, and then obviously prismatic coming into place. We can kind of be mad scientists and try and what does it do if I couple this with that or this with that? You know what I mean? So it's, mm -hmm. it's that whole for me, a lot of DLCs have unfortunately not shaken up the way that I play the game as much as I wanted them to. And this one looks like it's there's just, you know, sky's the limit when it comes to being able to tinker. I like tinkering. Yeah. Pidge. I love it. Uh, for me, I don't know if this is a cheesy answer, but it's going to have to go down to the, the day one raid, the, a brand new mm -hmm. raid launch, the day one experience, community wide event the just taking part in it that, that whole side of the game obviously we've got the build up to that from the launch but that's what i'm converging on at least for the, the initial launch sort of period mm -hmm. the, when i was making up the bracket when i put the poll out it was crazy to see not many people voted for the raid portion 
mm. on on that. And I don't know if that's d- directly reflective of how many people actually participate in raids from the community or if it's just so low on a long, long list of things that we're getting to, to change in Destiny 2. Um, but th- I think the raid is probably one of my favorite things. Uh, I, w- I just want to see how they... I want to see it, like if and how we take out the witness because I can't, it feels like it could be like a very, in a world where anything is possible uh, in a world where space magic exists, uh, something along the lines of a groundhog day situation. Uh, we've already been through that with the dreaming city, but I could definitely see it happening um again <laughs> with with the story in the uh in the pale heart destination um and as we go, go from there um we'll just go ahead and bring up the uh tourney bracket here uh for the tourney bracket like i said all of these were voted on by people from the community um th- uh i would say honorable mentions to uh, power changes uh, with fire team power, activity power, and account power, and uh, enhance enhancing weapons beyond uh, what we're capable of doing right now. Those all those were voted highly, uh, but they just didn't make the cut with uh, with some of our friends over on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, touching on on those, um, how do you guys feel about the changes that they're making to fire team power and to enhancing weapons? Uh, TV, let's start with you. Well, fire team, I think the fire team power to me is a really big deal. You know, I think back for me personally, I've always been a PVP focused guy and I do enjoy doing day one raids. And one of the things I dislike the most is when a new uh, DLC drops and I have to sideline my favorite way to play destiny. So that mm-hmm. I can just focus on trying to make sure I'm not a detriment to my raid team. I got to get my power level up. I have to do all these activities that I don't really love in order to do it, just so I can make sure that I'm not dragging the team down. Mm-hmm. And I know that uh, as uh, I, th- I think a lot of the more casual side of gamers feel that pressure sometimes too, where they feel like I, I would like to participate in some of these things, but unfortunately I don't live, breathe, eat, sleep destiny. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that keep, keeps me away from some of the content I'm most interested in. And I think it's cool that we have this uh, fire team power mechanic now that's going to help offset that and really make the game more approachable, especially some of the best content Destiny has to offer. We want people engaging with that content because I think that's where people really get bit by the Destiny bug the most sometimes. So that's a big deal, uh, you know, to me. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's, really cool it also reminds me a lot of late stage destiny one when they were would allow you to infuse weapons and gear or allows you to infuse armor uh across your characters so that you could all be you know the maximum light possible there Mm -hmm. um right right there toward the end it feels like a good good move and hopefully a system that if they see success with it here maybe they push that forward into like a, a successor um, D and and Pigeon, what are your thoughts on on power? Yeah, I I I'm all for it. So, and mm-hmm. um, I think the power system in general has stagnated in the past few years. Like, take the past content year, it's we've not seen any increase as far as uh, I can remember. We've mm-hmm. not seen a single increase since the initial DLC drop. And okay. A big, a big thing that people mention is like the artificial time sink to to get mm-hmm. power level in the game, and then asking why does it matter when Bungie introduces things that impose power caps on your characters, like heroic campaign, uh, legend difficulty, activities, master, and so on. Um, bringing this system in for me at least, um, I tend to welcome in a lot of new players through my stream or through my Discord community. And one of the first things that happens usually is, well, like, how do I get up to that power level and get involved? Whereas now I can go, hey, like, I can actually bring you into premier activities like raids or dungeons, uh, and they can just enjoy it and see what has to offer. 
I think that helps give them a, a power fantasy to actually grind the game and, and play it out. Uh, on a more personal note, my dad plays Destiny occasionally, but he tends to uh, drift. He obviously doesn't get as much time as, as I do to like to, to grind mm-hmm. and play the game. So when I invite him to join our play sessions, we're kind of going, oh, you're, you're under light for this. And it's like, well, now that's a thing of the past where he can hop in, play the content, and that should hopefully be enough for him to, to take part and have a challenge, have fun with it as well at the same time. So mm-hmm. anyway, the TLDR really is it's a massive, uh, amazing change. And yeah, hopefully it influences how power works in the game going forwards. D is yeah. somebody who's who's stepped away from the game for a little bit and is just coming back around to it. How do you like? How do you feel about these changes? Well, just everything uh, TV and Pitch spoke to. Um, like this is for me. Um, as someone who doesn't have as much time to just grind my, as much as I'd love to, um, haven't stepped away because I've fallen out of love with destiny or anything like that. Just, you know, life, life happened. So when I come back, I'm able to jump in, um, and I can still, you know, do activities with friends, um, who are higher level. Most all my friends are PVE mm-hmm. players and they're really good. So they have all the stuff and not feeling like I'm a burden to them. But also as a creator, you know, who still makes content, being able to jump in, do the activity, get the loot so I can then make, OK, this is a fun build that I created, which isn't delayed by me having to grind to a power level to do the activity, to get the loot, to make the thing. So um, it's I love it. I'm excited. Hopefully it, it in practice it works really good. The, the one Bungie has this thing of like pitching us on an idea sometimes that sounds really good until we get it in our hands. Um and then it's not as great as it sounded. So hopefully it's it is as good as it sounds. Um and I'm really able to just kind of play the game and enjoy it without feeling this this burden of of power. Mm-hmm. I moving to the enhancement of of weapons, that seems like it seems like a really solid move um, to do, especially when you're unsunsetting everything, <laughs> um, uh, allowing you That's to use huge. that. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Um, so hats off to both of those changes uh, down the pike. But I think the most exciting things are the things that are on this list now. Um, in the first bracket, we have prismatic super subclasses going up against the return of Cade 6. Um, How dare you. Of this is the community that did it. Uh, so of of these two uh, upcoming features, um, which are you most excited about, and uh, and why? This is, uh, this is torture. You're gonna make me <laughs> make okay. me pick between and these two. Me two days yeah. ago, <laughs> okay, uh, if you'd asked me two days ago, um, I say potential spoilers if you haven't played this week's story mission mm-hmm. please go ahead and do that um oh, that's a tough call man <laughs> I, I, I like I, I i was so excited for prismatic but until yesterday and in this case for this vote um do you know what? I'll, I'll say i'll say i'm a hunter main so return to cade six absolutely um, yeah. Y- yesterday's uh, events got me in the feels. So, um, yeah, I think it's just just one of those things. Definitely, uh, Kate's iconic. One of the most iconic mm-hmm. characters in the game. Um, having Nathan Fillon back voicing him, I'm a huge fan of his work as well. So, um, just seeing what his place in the campaign is. I've got so many questions about why he's back, what's going on with that. So the mystery being there is kind of exciting. Yeah, that and, plays and, out. Is he, and is he permanent? Or is this yeah, like, is exactly. he going to be like our Virgil, our guide through the Traveler? But then when we're done with our that's, business there, is he staying? Oh, that's it. Uh, and yeah, that cutscene yesterday definitely set off a few emotions. Uh, and I guess this is kind of a, a, a humble brag, but I got sent a Cade 6 cloak as well. <laughs> I, uh, I saw over the weekend. That. That's so cool. So, uh, it's it's hanging up behind me. Can't quite see it, but uh, I think that just adds to my vote for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. 
historic historically yeah. on the show we've called him the Mickey Mouse of Destiny 2. And when when we've discussed it, I was like, I'm kind of glad he died. <laughs> like, Mickey Mouse <laughs> needed to die in order for the game to progress and become darker. And like, <laughs> and now we have him back at a time where you know things are kind of lightening up. It seems. Yeah, I think they've held. I was going to say that I feel like they did hold a somber tone for quite a, a good while. You know, like, yeah, they really, right. yeah, they, they, really, they, they death is they imminent. Did milk vibe, it. Yeah. yeah, they they held that down well since uh, Kate's uh, final death, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see his his place in the campaign and um, just the presentation of all as well. Like, I can't wait. He's so enigmatic, you know, like, even that cutscene the other day and you're just like, he's fucking doing his thing, you know? It's like, fuck. Excuse my language. There's the first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it might be uh, surprising, you know, Cade's return going toe-to-toe with Prismatic here as a PvP player. Uh, I'm actually with you, Pidge. I'm, I'm more excited about Cade being back and seeing... You know, because in my head canon, I think there's a few people that need some closure with Cade. One of them, obviously, is is Crow, mm-hmm. and we get to see that play out and the guilt that he carries and and the the looks that he gets in the tower because everyone just sees him as the Cade killer. So for him to be able to have some sort of a you know full circle closure experience with Cade and maybe feeling forgiveness in that capacity is something he needs. I think also in my head canon, our guardian carries some guilt because we were. Mm-hmm his fire team when he died we in a sense let him down he's a fire team member on that mission and we watched him die uh we weren't there for him when he when he needed backup i think also pet revenge needs some of that closure too so hopefully we see i'm a little worried they won't touch on petra because we haven't seen anything about her yet with final shape stuff but i think right. she needs to be a part of that conversation in some capacity um uh, as a PvP guy, I'm actually a little... Um, I don't know that I'm scared about Prismatic, but I'm definitely a little skeptical because I have felt for a while now that since Subclass 3.0 was a thing, class identity has really started to take some serious hits in PvP, where things that used to be strictly Titan are not strictly Titan anymore, and things that used to be strictly Mm -hmm. Warlock are not strictly Warlock anymore. In fact, Warlock was supposed to be the Threadling subclass, and it's not in PvP. The best Threadling subclass is actually the Hunter, even though we have the Broodweaver. That's their whole thing. So I feel like for a while now, subclass identity has been taking a serious hit, and I don't like that so much. And now Mm -hmm. we've got Prismatic and we have Exotic... um, <clears throat> you know, class items that are going to blur those lines even further. And I'm just, I'm a little skeptical about it. Do you, do you feel that with, um, I'm looking at the article right now. And do you feel like the class identity um, with the new like combined grenades, do you feel like that still holds some of the class identity or do you feel like that's just a, a symptom of the watering down of, of classes? Well, I think that step one for me feeling this way was subclass 3.0, where we started to blur the lines from class to class. And mm-hmm. then with prismatic, now it's like within the classes now within the subclasses, those lines are getting blurred on a different level. So it's like a two tiered dilution of what makes a void walker a void walker what makes a striker titan a striker titan you know what i mean so i'm definitely excited to play with around with the uh you know the different combinations i bleak watcher plus the helion turret sounds like it's going to be a really fun thing to do you know what i mean like throw out the bleak watcher it's shooting ice crystals and everything slowing them down and then you've got a mortar that's dropping fire bombs into the mob like that just sounds super cool don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but I just, I'm not too (laughs) sure I love the idea that we're just really blurring the lines to, as a PvP player, one of the things that that makes you really good at the game is being able to look at your opponent and immediately know what to expect. You you look Mm -hmm. at my opponent and I see uh, an Atheris gauntlet and immediately in my head I'm thinking, did he just get a, he just got a full burst on me, so I need to be mindful of a ricochet knife that's about to come in. It's stuff like that. It's, It's sort of thinking two to three steps ahead. And now when I look at a player in the final shape, I'm not going to have a freaking clue. I'm going to see that exotic uh, class item on. I'm like, I don't know. They could have any number of exotic perks on that thing. I I don't know what to expect in this uh, engagement. 
And same thing with like subclass stuff. You see a void walker, you think, okay, I need to keep an eye out for that pocket singularity. So I need to play not so close to this corner if I get tagged up. It's stuff like that that's mm-hmm. no longer clear. And that's what I'm worried about. Kale, what about you? Um, or just ver- Cade versus Prism. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, just kind of all the things we talked about. Um, I'm a well known hunter main. Um, and as, as excited as I am for Prism, um, you know, kind of to, to counter TV's point, you know, he's at, you know, he's the PVP expert in here. I'm an agent of chaos. I want (laughs) just absolute, uh, just crazy fun time, the most ridiculous overpowered things we can combine. So I am very excited for Prismatic, uh, subclasses, seeing what crazy combinations we can make there, but. It's Cade Six, man. He's he's the reason I love Destiny as much as I do. I I was a huge Nathan Fillion fan before I played Destiny, and then I found out he was in the game. Then I found out I loved Hunter. I found out he was the Hunter Vanguard, uh, and just you know he's he's one of the huge reasons. And I just love him as a character. I in any like RPGs and things like that. I usually like to play like the rogue thief type character. So mm-hmm. he's just a hundred percent my vibe, and um. You know, I, you know, TV mentioned just just the closure aspect of it, like uh, seeing those different storylines play out with Crow and uh, and Petra and all the different characters and um, just seeing how how is he alive? How are we meeting him? Is he really there? Will he be permanent? Is he going to usher us into Destiny 3? Some kind of it just so many things. So I'm going to have to go. Return of Cade Six here. As much as I love the chaos that I'm sure prismatic <laughs> subclasses will bring, um, but it's it's a very very close race. But I got to edge it out to Cade. Cade with the sweep, <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I was like, so I guess like my pros for prismatic were kind of like it seems like it's going to be like more of an action per minute subclass, um, but. With with everything being said here, I'm the return of Cade Six wins wins it out, <laughs> moves on to the next round. Um, after that, we have uh, the wrap up of the Light and Dark Saga with uh, the new uh, competing against the Pale Heart location. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I think it's. I wouldn't say it was going to be easy, Dan. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's got to be the wrap up, right? This is how many years in the making. Like yeah. a new location is a new location, and I'm sure it's going to be great. Hopefully, it's as good, if not better, than the Dreaming City. And we're going to sink our teeth into it and be discovering secrets and and all the good things. This isn't anything negative about a new location, but the light and dark saga is what we've been doing since destiny one. Mm -hmm. And it's all those stories, all those years, all those moments that didn't quite make sense. And we, you know, got retconned later on and, and all these, it's, it's gotta be the wrap up of light and dark because it's just been so long in the making. TV. What about you? I'm going to go the other way. I think, there's a couple reasons for this. I'm more excited. I think about the pale heart and I think that that's not just about the location. I think it's also a, a big part of that is environmental storytelling, which we've seen Bungie does a really good job mm-hmm. of, but being able to understand the traveler, the traveler's ontology and what is it physically? Um, yeah, I think that that's for me, the thing I'm most looking forward to is just engaging in that space and what that means for future content, whether it's strikes, whether it's PVP maps or lost sectors that we're going to be engaging with, with that space for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty jazzed about the location itself. And I do really appreciate that the aesthetic of it, to me, it feels more like that. Uh, I don't even know how to quantify the aesthetic, but the D1 aesthetic was just different. It, it kind of had this um knights of the round table meets space fantasy Mm -hmm. kind of a grit to it and i really fell in love with that whole aesthetic and that whole vibe and i think that a lot of the the recent locations we've been to have have really foregone that initial uh vision for destiny's aesthetic and this looks like it's a return to that and to me that's what i'm most excited about i think the light versus uh, dark saga wrap up to me is a little less 
uh i mean i'm definitely intrigued right definitely mm -hmm. interested gonna be engaged with it but i don't find the witness as, as much of a compelling villain as i wanted the witness to be yeah um don't i don't feel this i don't feel any emotional connection to the witness in ways that we have previous like Fickrel, I I felt way more intense feelings about taking down Fickrel than I do the witness. Um, yeah. You know, Ziva Wrath as well. Like that, these are the characters. These sort of side peripheral characters that actually have a a much more uh, physical change to the story in real time. Not this looming figure that's just pulling yeah. strings from behind the the curtain. Those bad guys have been the ones I'm most interested in. So that's where I'm at with that. Do you, Do you feel think like it's because? Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, I was I was just thinking. Do you think it's because the witness is a fairly new villain, whereas Zevo or Wrath has been around, you know, in the background for a while? The and witness has gotten a lot more screen time than Zevo has, though. Yeah. And recently, but we've always heard, you know, whispers and like in the in the lore more so than on screen, but just. Or do you think that has anything to do with it? Or are you just find I don't think it's recency. those feelings more compelling? I mean, from the trailer of Forsaken, I was ready to go execute Cade or uh, execute Cade's killer. You know what I mean? I was ready to right, go yeah. take Prince Aldrin down. Um, and it's because of that very real impact that Aldrin and Fickrell had on the characters that we know and love and and I, I think that honestly, with the Witch Queen stuff and the way that Sabathun manipulated uh, all of us and Saint and Ikora by replacing Osiris and and um, that like that, you're like, you got to be you son of a, you know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> yeah. the reaction that you get and that I want to have because it's like they were so close. I was literally in the same room with them. But I don't feel those same feelings with the witness. Yeah, it's just sort of witness this has here. Yeah, I, he hasn't really done anything to make us go like, I can't believe you did that. I yeah. think I think that's <laughs> it. Like, we don't have any like other than seeing Callus's reaction to like him getting angry. We don't really have. We have the kind of nebulous like, oh, he the witness is so powerful, and you see the effects of what the witness is able to do, but we haven't seen what the witness is doing mm -hmm. or is capable of, um, or just physically in that space. So to me, the witness feels like it's, it's a little soft until I see him like, you know, until I see him step up. Um, also like the ending of a saga is very rarely um, the peak of what a story is. Um, very rarely is it better than the climax of it, which I guess if you, count like lightfall on it and how you feel i don't know what you're talking about that last matrix movie was was amazing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i don't know it's like were you were you uh an end game fan or were you <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like which of the two movies uh, did you enjoy more and for what reason uh Sorry, Paige, me what, specifically well what i mean to about? anybody on the panel Pitch hasn't talked in a while. Uh, Endgame was good, yeah. Um, if, they, if I had to pick one part, yeah, okay, I, I get what you're saying. I'm just, like, pondering. Um, I, I can't remember the movies, man. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I was using it as a device what? to compare right. Destiny's, like, 10-year saga because it's yeah, kind of, like, hand-in-hand hand like, with, like, yeah. Okay, I'll say Endgame part two, by the way, just, just for topic, <laughs> for, for the off-topic. <laughs> you love the assemble, got it. <laughs> the assemble, uh, that 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 one bit, that one bit that happened. Mm -hmm. Um, from a from a general look at this though, um, a friend in chat kind of did say these go hand in hand. Like we're going to this new location at the same time that we're wrapping up the saga, and um, the big thing being that the location, as far as I understand from what Bungie's teased us, is mm -hmm. they're kind of like like made up of various locations that we've visited over the whole saga, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Lots of, I, I mean, they just look like, well, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the, the images. TV kind of said it with environmental storytelling. That's going to be there. We're going to have all these callbacks to things that have happened in the past right. uh, or within the Pale Heart area, um, which is kind of where I'm at because I... 
like we were talking about the weapons earlier, I enjoyed nostalgia, the feeling of nostalgia, um, and media content games, and uh, especially for Destiny. So for me at the moment, it's the location. I can't wait to see the location. I can't wait to see what callbacks are involved for the for the past ten years, and how that's used to move the the finale into place, which is mm-hmm. obviously hand in hand, but not yeah. not directly. Oh, yeah, a little more nuanced than on. that, yeah. Yeah, you guys are swaying it. me. I gotta, I gotta be honest. Swaying <laughs> me a little bit. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. That's how I, I played out better in my head. They're both very interrelated: the finale and the location. Mm-hmm. But the environmental storytelling that Bungie does, along with the nostalgia and it being a blend of things we've experienced and seen before, yeah, that's that's what hits at home for me for it being the location and this this sort of matchup. Yeah. Something Farmark said earlier in the chat was he w- just the secrets of Destiny 2. Like, he's really looking forward to those. And I feel like inside the travel, there's got to be rife <laughs> for yeah. plenty of secrets, like, to just kind of root around in and find. Um, so I'm going to move the pale heart forward. Um, because we'll, all, we'll always have the location, but rare, rarely do we have the, uh, the wrap up of a saga more than once. Uh, Looking at you, Mass Effect. Um, (laughs) So, uh, moving on to the next section of the bracket, uh, we have the exotic class items, which TV you touched on a little bit earlier um, when we were talking about the prismatic supers. And uh, episodes, uh, or epiodes, or epiosdes, uh, (laughs) as I have them here in the the bracket, because I didn't spell check this before going live. The the Um, lesser known Greek hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> R- responsible for telling you a story just a day at a time. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Uh, <laughs> D, what are your, where are your, or Pidge, let's start with Pidge here. What are your thoughts in this matchup? Uh, straight up. Um, from what we understand, the exotic class items coming in on a mm-hmm. unique activity post raid, um, being the specific time frame for them to drop, have got me mega excited. Um, I've already had some friends cooking up the different combinations um, of what we've seen, what we've been shown. Um, I think it's a really cool concept as well, like having these sort of diluted perks from exotics we we use on the regular um i, I know this kind of goes against what tv said there as well like the chaos of, <laughs> of PvP and stuff like um but i love the, the idea of having that chase as well so i'll have a certain combo in my mind i think someone crunched the numbers there's x amount of combinations you can get like looking at like factorials and stuff um but that for me is going to be exciting because I'll be like chasing that one combo that I want to make for, for a build uh, and yeah. bring into the end game and stuff. And until I get that, I get to engage with the activity and then something else will come up. I'll go, oh, and I want to try this combo and that combo. So it creates a lot. Of, it creates a chase for me. That's it's that's like it's what I do. It's what I enjoy. Are there um, any combos that you're already thinking th- those ones for sure? I'm interested in off the top of my head. Uh, I think we I saw Liar's Handshake with another melee based one. I can't remember yeah. which one it was. It's like the double melee stuff from a hunter, mm-hmm. um, which would basically lead to some insane damage combos um, if you build up the right way, you know. Um, I think there was a few ones that were surprising as well, like the invis related ones, like Assassin's Kill. Oh, I yeah. I think I've seen that in there. So. You're getting these benefits from Assassin's Kill, like the invis side. Not, I don't think the healing side gets carried forward, and then stacking that with a damage uh, related exotic. So, uh, I love so, that for solo content. You know, for 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 someone like me who I've been hearing about this, but I haven't been able to go deep specifically on this. What's the what's the pitch for the exotic class items for those of us who don't know? So there's so each each class gets like um gets one exotic class item and like Pidge described earlier there's a watered down version of different um exotics that are put into those pools they they are not locked out uh necessarily according to uh class either so like 
some of the hunter's offerings can go into like Titan or Warlock. So you're able to make combinations that you wouldn't normally be able to do before. Um, like uh, for the hunter, one of the things that I was looking at, I was looking at Spirit of the Assassin with Spirit of Gear Falcon. I just thought that that would be like an interesting, um, interesting build. Uh, and then Spirit of Inmost Light with Spirit of the Coyote. I feel like that would be yeah, like yeah. constant oh. ability uptime. Like think yeah. things like that. Um, I have the article to, up here. This looks really sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it just it's going to enhance your gameplay. Uh, across the board, but TV has a very valid, um, has a very valid th thought in that, like, you're not going to be able to see necessarily, like, unless they break it down under the exotic, uh, item, like with bullet points, you're not going to be able to see exactly what they're building into, uh, on first glance when you're looking at trials or something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, I can, I already saw that as probably going to be an issue. Also, something that I've noted before on the podcast, but something that I haven't seen cleared up at all by Bungie is that when you look at the images for these items, uh, particularly in the videos that Bungie has put out, there's no stat block on them. Mm -hmm. If if you look at them, they, they don't offer any bump to your resilience or to your mobility or anything like that. Um, it's just purely what the exotic does which mm. if that's the case it feels like a, a good trade-off maybe that's their way of kind of tampering down um the, the four Just that game. <laughs> the, yeah yeah the the quad 100s across the board um so but yeah if i was gonna say if, go ahead you go ahead <laughs> Go ahead, D. So yeah. my, my question, I just want to make sure I'm understanding it right. So like I'm looking at the Titan Exotic, and we have Spirit of the Assassin, for example. Finishers, Power Melees, uh, Final Blows, Grant Invisibility. A Titan could have the uh, the Peregrine Greaves on and Spirit of the Assassin, and then they would get the Super sol uh, Shoulder Charge and go invisible? You couldn't have Peregrine Greaves on because you have the Exotic Class item, as far as we know. As as far as okay. we know, these don't stack okay. with another exotic. So you can't go triple down on exotic. Okay, I was yeah. like, wait, is this basically double exotics? No, so, okay, <laughs> got it. I also want to throw something else out that I think a lot of people forget, and that is, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, so um, I believe this to be true, um, you can only use the exotic class items with prismatic subclass as well. Mm -hmm. It can't be used with oh, the okay. agnostic subclasses. Yeah. So you can't just say, oh, I'm going to go on arc and use this overpowered exotic that combines the best of both worlds it's only so they thought about prismatic they have yeah. balancing kind of built in a little bit a little bit it, it, it feels like it feels, on paper. feels like prismatic is designed to be jack of all trades master of none maybe yeah I don't, well i yeah. don't know i feel like master of none makes it sound like it's less potent than it's gonna be but it's not gonna be obviously like if you want to be the best solar build you can be you need to you need to have a solar subclass on so so on and so forth but if you want to do the mixing and matching and, and not, like you said uh actions per minute kind of a kind of a thing i think the prismatic's the way to go yeah yeah for me when it comes to this matchup though i think that i'm actually going the other way i'm more excited about the way that the episodic you know, structure moving forward is is going to actually because that's like our future, right? That's yeah. how we're going to continue to engage with Destiny as a game long term. I think mean, exotic class items. I mean, that's cool stuff. More mad scientist stuff. I think that's neat. Don't get me wrong, but sandbox stuff is always subject to change, buffs, nerfs, all that stuff. Your favorite combination might not stay your favorite combination. Uh, you may decide that you don't even want to run a class item because they're just not as potent as running the the, the whole designated exotic uh, armor piece otherwise. So I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm most interested in how are we going to engage with Destiny moving forward now that we're, seasons are going to go away. We're going to do an episodic. What does that mean? What's the difference? How? What's the volume of content? Is it going to if there's going to be fewer of them per year than there are seasons then how are we going to get longevity out of these episodes and that's the stuff that I'm most intrigued by obviously especially as a content creator cuz I'm going to make a couple of videos on class items but uh my entire content uh schedule is going to be affected by episodes oh yeah absolutely I like episodes. So we were talking, we were talking about the light and dark wrap up and you hit it right on the head for me with like, this is the future. This is the thing that we're, we're pushing past this wrap up into. 
and I I guess I'm more excited about that than than really seeing how we take down the witness is I want to see Bife I had Bife on last year and we did like a huge lore dump episode mm -hmm. and he talked about um wanting to see a scene in which like Zivu Arath and Savathun kind of sit down and be like yeah we were lied to and kind of like deal with that trauma of that together and what that looks like for us as guardians going forward and the only possible way that I can see that scene working out right now, just due to time constraints and the way that stories are told, is in the episode that features heavily on the Hive. Uh, D, I think you're muted. Oh no, I was, uh, I was chat was clearing something up for you, so we oh, okay. can combine two exotic perks within the class item, but they're not as potent as a designated exotic. Right. Right. Got it. Okay. That that was the missing link. Okay, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Why would I want a, a lesser version? But it's having the two that makes it okay. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Um. I, I, it feels like we're kind of like split down the middle here. Is, is that fair to fair to assume? So my vote was on episodes. Episodes or ep epiosdes. The epiosdes. Uh, Mine epiosdes. is definitely for epiosdes. Um, for for D and Pidge, where do you guys stand? Class items. Class items. Yeah, I I think I gotta go class items just because of the mad scientist. Okay. Well, then what I'm gonna do here, uh, in the event that there was a split in the group here, we're gonna put it to chat chat vote. Um, I will. I'm gonna create a. Uh, poll here and uh, which are you most excited for am I allowed to vote <laughs> I, I everybody here is allowed to vote even though I already did yeah <laughs> uh, we're gonna say exotic class items let's make sure that I spell this one correctly dad you know what to do don't let me down <laughs> I I will say no no uh, uh electioneering at the poll please. Uh, <laughs> uh I'm going to get some water and uh when we come back we'll discuss uh the winner. Cool? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Be cool, right cool. Back. Now that everybody has returned from the break, um exotic class items won out that round thanks to chat. Recount Recount. You didn't you didn't yeah, hands up, you didn't do anything. Uh that's <laughs> um, I hundred percent voted for what I wanted to win. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's how it goes. <laughs> Mr. Keelan says TV's gonna flip a table. Um a table full of votes. <laughs> um so the next matchup is the dread, the new enemy type, the dread. Uh, versus the HUD updates that like seem to be quite in depth and uh, and pervasive. Um, everybody's thoughts, starting with uh, let's let's start with you, TV. Okay, um, I mean both of these things are a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, new combatants for the first time. I, I do not want to water that down or take any value away from that. That's huge. It's been a long time since we've had brand new combatants, and I think that that's uh, going to obviously change the way that we approach encounters. Because, I mean, a lot of it's just so solved at this point. You see a combatant, you know how to treat them and what to do with them. So, And we've even seen just the way that Tormentors have really shaken up. Uh, and Briggs, with the addition of Briggs. Like, some of these new combatants, mm -hmm. you really have to think about, okay, how do, should I approach this? Because these other things I typically do just don't work. You know what I mean? So I think that's awesome. Really excited about that. But as a PvP player, primarily HUD updates is going to have to take the cake for me because, I mean, for, for the longest time now, w the more complex your build gets, the less the game is able to communicate to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's times where it's like, you've got this buff active, but we literally cannot show it to you because we've got to communicate all these other things instead. Um and there's a lot of things that just aren't quantified where it's like, you have this buff and you're like, how long? And they're like, guess. And I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> I, ran, I, ran into that, I ran into that in Pantheon the other day uh, with like the, the class action buff. Yeah. 
couldn't see the class action buff because like priority wise it takes it's so low on the poll. Yeah. But like it was like, well, do we have it or do we not? Like, did anybody do a a, a class action right there? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it's like being able to clearly communicate all the things I want to know in real time. Um, that's going to be a big deal for sure. And I, I, was, I think they did a really good job with the way that the um, the prismatic like charge up system works too, and mm-hmm. the way that's communicated to you. I think all that stuff to me is is a huge quality of life update that I'm excited for. Yeah. Uh, D, what about you? Yeah, so I'm I'm going over the HUD updates and what I see looks really good. Um, the way it's broken out, weapon update, critical info, um, with all the timers, the HUD looks great. But HUD's gonna HUD, man. Um, I like new enemies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I I definitely appreciate the HUD, but at you know we're at some point we're all gonna get used to seeing it. Um, but anytime you can give me a true new enemy, because we've had a variation of Fallen, Hive, and um, and w- what else, uh, Taken for mm-hmm. y- or Vex, it's all quote unquote new enemies have just been some variation or reskin of those enemies. So hopefully, and I think they are, the Dread is a totally new enemy type, which completely changes how we play every activity in Destiny, potentially. Um, I think that's going to have more... Uh, impactful changes to the game. So that's what I would, if I had to say what I'm most excited for, it's got to be the new enemy because at some point HUD's going to HUD. Yeah. Pidge? Honestly, he nailed it. The HUD's going to HUD. Like, it's a great quality of life update, but it's just mm-hmm. going to be there intrinsically. It's just a evolution of a system we've already got. Uh, as for the new enemy types, um, yeah, they just look mental. I actually remember watching the 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 sort of mini vibe doc, the gameplay re- reveal trailer. Yeah, and I just got connotations of other games I've played, like Dark Souls and sort of roguelike games. Like the enemy types really brought me back to those sort of games and franchise. Um, one of the kickers being the way that they fight is, and the way they respond if we fight them basically i think there was the ones that like dash at you and fire out strand and really screw you up there was enemies that if you kill they pop out another thing for you to fight and if you're not if you don't do it kill them in a certain way like it's it's kind of it adds that sort of mechanical uh difficulty and understanding for when you're engaging in combat you can't just go gun ho and go right they're dead it's it's like oh it's this type anyway, let's deal with them a certain way. And that's yeah. something I've, I've always wanted uh, in the game and the, the regular like PV experience campaign or your run of the mill strikes and stuff. Raids, I raids I fully expect it, but mm-hmm. to be brought into um <clears throat> the sort of main content of the game. Uh, so it's gonna be really exciting to see. Also, shout out to the berserkers <laughs> from anyone that did Scourge of the Past. Those were a very popular enemy type to, that people pointed out we should have more things like this in the game. So it's taken them till now <laughs> to, to yeah. give us something like that, I think. Like, mechanically interesting uh, enemies to take down. R.I.P. The... Scourge. <laughs> R.I.P. Scourge, indeed. <laughs> the husk terrify me. And that's the first time that I've seen an enemy on the field recently where I've been like, how are you going to deal with several of those in a room? They're... It, it feels like a an enemy from Hades. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Hades was one of the ones that came mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just seems like something that's that's gonna be tough. The the HUD updates are gonna be great, and I want to see I want to see more stuff on the screen. However, uh, I feel like um, brutal in chat brings up a fairly good argument. Like even with the new HUD update, we all know we're still gonna not gonna see who has unstable light and kill our teammates. <laughs> You know, you talk about the husk. Uh, as far as I understand it, we uh, have one of Destiny's own beloved original OG content creators, sort of the mastermind behind the husk. Yeah. Uh, Holtzman. I don't know if you remember Holtzman from back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now That's working so. on combatants, combatant designer for Bungie. And the husk has yeah. been like his baby, what he's been working on. So That's amazing. 
So if you yeah. hate it, make sure you message him directly. <laughs> yeah, just at him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> joke, joke, kidding. Make TV sure told you it. to do it. So, yeah, I clip mean. It. <laughs> clip it. <laughs> clip it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember fighting Splicers and uh, Rise of Iron. And yeah. you found out if you popped their heads, they left like a SIVA particle. And that stuff hurt as well, man. So, yeah. like seeing this whole enemy come out, <laughs> like a bonus enemy, that's just, yeah. 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 It's daft, it's mental. Like I love it. <clears throat> you, I guess somebody could make the ar argument that <clears throat> these are evolutions on a reskin, like because they're being bumped up from different uh, um, or origins that we've um, fought before. But it just it feels like a good remix of these things uh, going forward. So while I I really enjoy the HUD updates, um, I think I think the dread are what's going to move move up for me as well. Um, I just hope so, they, they they get plenty of use out of them versus previous iterations like the yeah. the Lucent Hive and the Tormentors. They mm -hmm. felt very I think the analogy I had was like if you've seen the Alien movie, you only see the alien two or three times or something in that movie. Oh yeah, it's a ghost story. It's a ghost story, yeah. Whereas I want it to be every other encounter, you're like, Oh, there's another one and you're like panicking and chaos. Obviously without it ruining the novelty. I feel like we didn't get hit the right spot before with with other uh, like new enemy types coming into the game. Mm -hmm. Um, so that moves us on to the next section of the bracket. We have the return of Cade Six versus the Pale Heart location. Is this the the same conversation that we had previously, where like it's a light and dark recap wrap up, or is this is this something else? Do you guys feel? uh i'll i'll start um i think i kind of feel it, ever since you said it i don't know if someone in chat said it but you know light and dark wrap up or pale heart are kind of intertwined um i think cade potentially has more impact or maybe not more impact but just i don't know personally and, and it could just be unquantifiable my love for cade I'm just more, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm just <laughs> just pure bias. Let's call it what it is. I just I just like Cade. So I'll just go ahead and just put my vote down for Cade. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Keep it clean and simple. <laughs> for me, I won't try to wax poetic about it. That's fine. For me, at the end of the day, gameplay wins and Pale Heart location. We're going to have gameplay there, you know. And, yeah. And that's what I'm going to be directly interacting with. And like I said earlier, I, I voted for Kate. I'm very excited about that and seeing that wrap up and the closure it's going to bring for some of some characters and hopefully our guardian as well. But my I could be wrong, but my prediction here is that Kate is not a permanent thing. I, I if I had to fall off the log, I would say I feel like he is going to be our in the traveler guide. And when we I, wrap it I up, think you're we right. wrap it up. I think that. I think that his death was a permadeath thing, and this is just a, a a nice little Virgil moment where he gets to interact with us and and send us on our merry way. So I think in terms of like actual gameplay we're gonna have and and how it affects the the way that we're gonna interact with Destiny moving forward, I think the pale heart's gonna be something we're gonna see a lot more of. Mm -hmm. I think I guess right. my vote. I'm just <laughs> voting with my heart. You're <laughs> voting with your mind. <laughs> Matt Matt and chat. Matalat in chat brings up a good good thing. It's a it's his suspicion that Cade Six will be the Pale Heart vendor. I think that they confirmed that. I believe that they did. I could I could be very wrong in saying that. Um but it would be interesting if by the end of the campaign he was like maybe he makes some grand sacrifice. <laughs> and like that's that's how we pro project into like the next iteration uh or even how we defeat the witness, although that would be kind of goofy since the witness is going to be at the end of a raid um i could see an argument for cade six here but i i'm with you tv that like the the gameplay is the thing like that's that's what we're going to be interacting with the most cade six eventually even if he is the uh the vendor for the pale heart is going to turn into a shahan Somebody that you see occasionally to pick up bounties from, if, if there even are still bounties uh, yeah. for locations, for this location specifically. But you're going to see him every once in a while, you're going to tip your hat at him, you're going to grab what you need, and then you're going to go. You're you're not really going to interact with him too much further unless there's some sort of like 
post story quest with him. Uh, Pidge, what about you? So uh, for me, I'm I'm definitely bringing forward the the location as well. Yeah. Um, I've got that suspicion that K is going to be a a temporary staple for like the the campaign, and there'll be some sort of closing point where we we say goodbye. Potentially, I know that's kind of cliche, but um. But getting to enjoy the location and explore it, uh, I think Bungie did really well presenting, in particular, the Witch Queen um, patrol space through its missions. Each little bit felt so unique to to go through. It played its part. Uh, and I can't wait to play, play out those environments, especially with all the new abilities that we're getting. Heck yeah. Uh, then I'd say the Pale Heart moves on. Sorry, D. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. I'm, I'm shocked. My uh, very logically well thought out argument. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have um, class exotic items versus the dread. Uh, TV. Let's start with you. All right. Um, I think for me, between these two, I got to go with the dread over mm-hmm. class items. Um, because uh, you me... just don't like class items, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> can His PvP is deny. showing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, combatants is a much more exciting and much more permanent thing. Doesn't matter what subclass you're playing on, you're going to play against these new combatants and going to have to learn how to play against them and and feel the pressure of having them on the battlefield. I think that's super cool, especially the way that they change the way that encounters are done. It's not just a, oh, I shoot you and you die kind of a thing, but they each mm-hmm. have like, like the whole rubber band, like snap you in. And you know, that's so cool. And having to sort of play around that and anticipate that. And uh, I think that for me, that's the most exciting thing of those two class items is like another, another exotic thing that we're going to play with. We might use it. We might not. Mm hmm. Pidge, what about you? Uh, I'm actually going to be with the the dread enemy type still for this mm-hmm. this bracket. Um, yeah, I think I think they're the coolest looking things we've seen. I think the mechanics of them will be interesting to engage with, as opposed to class items which are ridiculously cool in their own right. Um, but none of them are bringing anything fresh in mm-hmm. the sense of what they do. It's just the i guess the technicality of them we, we can combine these things so yeah the, the dreads yeah i can't wait to, 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 to see them for the first time and react and be like what and <laughs> whatever ensues uh d yeah uh, i think this is uh probably a clean sweep for the the new enemy type um it's new it's fresh class items as exciting as it is it's just comboing things that we already have. Um, mm-hmm. Dread is something totally brand new that's going to push the the overall game forward. So I go Dread. Heck yeah. I hope we see them in episodes post uh, uh, the raid, post the, the Pale Heart location. I hope we see them still throughout the, gal- throughout the galaxy as some sort of like um, threat that we still have to deal with. Much like how we had the Taken post uh, King's Fall. Yeah. Um, all right. So that leads to our final, um, to our final matchup here, and I'm gonna leave this this up to you guys. Uh, do you want to do you want to leave this up to chat to um, to decide, and then go from uh, and then do like a question and answer session, or do you? Uh, I mean, we've we've talked about the Pale Heart location. We've talked about the Dread. Like like some of these, they all go hand in hand. They're all connected because they're all part of the same update. Um, or would you guys like to hash it out together here? Let chat fight. Let chat fight? Yeah. 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 Fight. yeah. I'll, let, I'll let chat <laughs> for as long as they peck. <laughs> the right one. Your, your mic cut out there. Your mic cut out there, Paige. Uh, what was... <laughs> what was it? What was it? Uh, chat fight. All right. So then I'll put up another poll. So the pale heart versus the dread here. Like, I, I think this is the one to me that you can't have one without the other. So that's what, what it makes more well, tough for me. To that, I will say if we're, we're going to let chat fight and I'm not trying to sway the vote. Yeah. But if, if, if I, if, if I were voting 
of the two, I probably would go Dread only because you can drop Dread into other activities that we have now just to see how it reacts. You can't drop the Pale Heart into activities we have mm. now. So imagine like a Law Sector, a Legendary Law Sector, or or even a Nightfall or something, and Bungie Damn. decides to remix it and throw Dread in there. How does that change the the encounter? Does it change it completely? Um, so I think having that flexibility to do that makes the dread more impactful, but that's not to say I'm more excited for the dread, but I just think, you know, because they do go hand in hand, but you can take that piece out and put it into other stuff. Yeah. The Pantheon has been really revealing about how adding a tormentor into the mix completely changes. Yeah. Like a portion of the encounter. Um, for like in some cases for the better <laughs> in, in some cases for the annoyance uh i can't tell you the amount of times that uh that during oryx dps <laughs> just a torment a rogue tormentor comes out of nowhere and just is like nope everybody's going everywhere <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. uh pidge and tv what about you that's tough yeah they do yeah. go hand in hand no doubt about it it's they're Coming into the game, the, the dread are coming into the game in this location. They are. Do we even know their origins? Like, they, they were created by the witness. Yeah. Inside the pale heart, or like, has it got a factory or something? Like, what's going on? Um, see now that saying that out loud has put me onto the thought pattern of no, nah, the, the location must have <laughs> more secrets to to the enemy types and mm-hmm. where they're coming from. So. Um, yeah, I think I think location wins over for me still. Mm-hmm. Um, but literally for just what I've said there, it tying back to the um, like out the origins of the dread, basically. Me location, location, location. Yeah. Um, um, pale heart. I like to interact with the space, the environmental storytelling, the things we've talked about already and how that's going to progress the narrative just being in that space and understanding the the traveler's ontology a little bit more. To me, that's a big deal, obviously. And then also the other activities that could come with it, like combatants are super cool. I'm sure we'll fight them in other spaces, but I mean, to be able to have lost, new Lost Sectors we're going to be farming for, for loot in at mm-hmm. the pale. There, there are all new locations. That's exciting to me. The potential for PvP maps in this new location uh dungeons all of those things that that has me more inclined to vote for uh, the location itself all right well chat is with you guys uh and the pale heart will be moving on to the most anticipated thing uh at least by this panel (laughs) and by, (laughs) by the folks in this chat uh for the final shape um if chat wants to ask a couple of questions, we can kind of field some of those. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this has been a really fun episode. Um, and thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Um, yeah. Uh, some other items that were on the list that didn't make it were um, <clears throat> the blended 1v1 or 111 system for PvP. Um as well as uh, private matches receiving more options. TV, as kind of the res- resident PvP guy on this panel, um, <laughs> what are some of your thoughts on those? Well, um, I think that one of the things that's kept Destiny back in in sort of like a production value thing has really been the lack of customizability for private matches. So the more depth we get there, the better. Like, we've basically seen a complete drop-off in, um, in like, tournaments and stuff like that that were high production value. We used to do a ton of them. It was a great thing for the, the whole PvP community and even some of the PvE community to come around, get involved with, cheer on their favorite competitors, their favorite mm-hmm. teams. Um so I, I definitely miss some of that stuff. I know that Destiny is not like a hyper um, competitive game per se, but it does have some value uh, as a sort of high octane production 
uh, you know, thing. And it's also it's a fun way for streamers like me to interact with their own communities on a deeper level, be doing private matches. We've done a lot of private match stuff in the past. So I'm definitely excited about that. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal by any stretch because it's not like it's not going to affect most people's day to day. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I'm excited about it because it will affect my small, small little sphere of things. So, mm-hmm. so with that said, though, um, Tyson Green is coming on, um, who's kind of like yes. the granddaddy, granddaddy of Forge mode. Yeah. Do you see that opening up possibilities in private matches? Um, hopefully, you know, if for those who aren't familiar with him, you're talking like Halo Three PvP mastermind. Mm-hmm. So at least this is an individual who understands the value that a healthy PvP ecosystem can bring to a game as a whole and to a community as a whole. I don't know that I've ever seen a PvP community as enthusiastic and involved as the Halo 3 community was. I mean, the willingness to go out of your way to go interact with the community outside of the game on like private forums and Bungie.net and and file sharing and creating maps together and sharing them and having online events and then uh, physical real space meetups and stuff like that. Like that was the pinnacle, you know? And yeah. I think that's why people remember that game so fondly. So. Uh, we have seen a whole lot of PvP neglect in Destiny's lifespan, and uh, we've seen the effects that it's had on a pretty a considerable part of the community. You know, there was a there was a time where Destiny's player base, forty percent of Destiny's whole player base, was actively playing PvP, and now in recent seasons and in recent months, we've seen it as low as like seven percent. So, that's a big swing. Um, that's a big part of your community. That's a big part of your revenue flow too, because these people are buying ornaments. Mm-hmm. They are buying, you know, paying money for silver to get a better ornament on their favorite exotic. And um, you know, they a big part of playing PvP is looking cool when you kill people. So mm-hmm. I think I think uh, Tyson being there is a definitely definitely going to be a boot. Well, hopefully, hopefully, be a boon to the PvP side of things too. I noticed. Uh, people looking real cool when they're bagging me. Uh, mm. Just don't <laughs> let them kill you, Dan. Well, I, is... I have a bad habit. It's a nervous tick. Really, Easy solution. Where <laughs> I, I have a nervous tick really where like if I'm not doing anything, this happens in raids, this happens in PvP, this happens everywhere. Um, I just hit down uh, on, my, on my PlayStation pad, D-pad and uh, I, it, my character starts skanking, starts doing the ska dance. And I'm not <laughs> trying to dance on anybody. I'm not trying to like <laughs> show that I am better than anyone else. It's just a nervous <laughs> tick, and I do it all the time. I have a feeling that that's why I'm getting bagged. Um, yeah. So really, sorry I, I danced on your body. Removed. Got nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got nervous. <laughs> I just need to have my thumbs removed. I think that's what it is. Um, there you go. So uh, a question from John Bishop Esquire: uh, Which class are you most looking forward to playing in the final shape? Uh, Pidge, let's start with you. Hmm. Class as in main class, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll still be rocking my hunter. You, you'll see me there day one, uh, rocking up with my hunter. I actually have the the luxury of um two friends that I'll be jumping in with who play a titan and a warlock respectively, and I always get a kick out of running as the hunter, and I get to see them experience their. The new things as a titan and as a warlock and then vice versa with me on my hunter so i'll be there my, my jumpy boy <laughs> yeah tv what about you woofy boy warlock for sure yeah we flew uh i think the freezing singularity looks really cool i'm excited to play around with that mm-hmm. um and then i've always been a big fan of, of equipment that enhances gunplay and and like the whole buddy system with warlocks is really cool. So finally having a, a solar buddy, uh, mm-hmm. I'm excited to play around with that too. D. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing a warlock. No, um, I'm a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hunter through and through. Uh, you'll never find me. I won't say never, but you usually <laughs> find me. Yeah, because. 
chat has some things they can do to make me play other classes. But yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to say that. <laughs> I don't want to put that out there. Uh, but yeah, Hunter, excited to to just jump into the new toolkit, uh, get Teresa looking good and and deadly. And uh, yeah, I'll probably be main in Hunter for the entirety of Final Shape. I think I have to do the campaign as as a titan because of a charity incentive uh from back in january so <clears throat> i'll be playing around with that fantasy i'm actually kind of looking forward to the um the void axe uh portion of that subclass i think or the the new subclass being added with with the void axe i think that, that looks fun uh i have yet to read the article from today pidge i know that you were you were saying that you were a little hoarse uh from coming yeah. off of a stream oh, well. where you read all of it um <laughs> Uh, and I know that I know that Warden of Dawn and Well both caught nerfs. So, like for yep. those identities, uh, how TV? How does how does it feel for Well? Um, I don't usually use Ward of Dawn all that often uh, <laughs> anymore. But uh, well, on the PvP side of things, uh, thank God. <laughs> because trials they decided to change trials to the dominion uh game type a while ago and it basically just made it so that okay well i guess you either run well or bubble or you lose it's that simple um they're automatic round winners and and then we saw well why is conditional finality a raid exotic the most used gun in pvp well it's because it's the only thing that can shut those things down Mm -hmm. And then they targeted special ammo. Now we have even fewer ways to take those things down. So my preference would have been to rethink the Dominion game mode. Mm -hmm. But next best thing is to nerf well and and bubble. So uh, that'll be a, a boon, I think, to trials specifically. Because those things really do just... You have a, a great 4-4 four, four match, all gunplay, you know, and it's 4-4, four to four, but the other team has three bubbles, and you were running roaming supers that mm -hmm. you're never going to see. So they win. It's that simple. They push a button and win. So I'm excited that that's hopefully going to be mitigated a bit. Yeah. But in PvE, you're not allowed off of your well. Just still, just... <laughs> yeah, my raid team knows. They're like, "Good luck, man. I ain't doing. That. I'm not running well. Screw that. I can just see six wells. Guys, we need more wells. We I'm need also, more. We need I'm more also wells. the guys like we've got one yellow horn, and then there's four legendary rockets shooting the boss, and then there's this umbrella of death bring, and they're like, "Team, put it away." I'm like, "No, yeah. I like yeah. it. It's neat." <laughs> Um, and a sidearm. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, well, but my sidearm now is the indebted kindness, so I'm not a detriment anymore. Okay, okay. Law of uh, sidearm. <laughs> Fool in chat asks, uh, what received the most votes from the spreadsheet? Only I can give you that answer. Um, the number one seed was Prismatic. Uh, that's That was the one that the most people voted for. Um, if I'm looking at the summary here, out of 45 votes, uh, Prismatic Prismatic got 39 vote, like 39 people had that on their list of in their top 10. So that was like the most popular thing that people voted on. Uh, some of the answers for that included, uh, let's see, uh, Prismatic subclass as a concept to me is peak Destiny 2 power fantasy. It's a concept that may, uh, that many have no doubt thought about in the back of their minds before this finally wielding both the light and darkness just feels like a destiny version of super saiyan level upgrade from a lore and hopefully gameplay standpoint um yeah that's something that like i i think i i would hazard to say that nobody nobody in their wildest dreams hasn't thought of it at least once um but yeah that was that was the number one thing um the question after that is, um, we'll say uh, green protagonist. Did you know? Uh, uh, oh, they that was. Just, did you know Bungie used to use fan made maps in competitive Halo? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh I think yeah. That would be cool to see uh, in in the game going forward. Um, yeah. The the very last question, unless we have any more or anybody that wants to pop in on a call, um, Dave versus. 
says, since the new game director was announced, the game has completely jumped in terms of hype and content with the community. Do you think this is just a timing thing and not his doing? Or do you think that oh, yeah. he can maintain this level uh, that it's at now? Yeah, definitely a timing thing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a one-to-one. -one. Because Joe's gone, we now have more hype. I, I mean, yeah. Joe's transitioning out right before the standard time that you would start promoting your major DLC anyways. So it's just mm -hmm. a timing thing. And and yeah. obviously, uh, Joe was probably working very closely with Tyson in for a while leading up to that transition, too. It mm -hmm. probably wasn't like, oh, by the way, I'm leaving. Tyson, you're up. He's like, oh, OK. So, yeah, a lot of those things move slowly behind the scenes. So I don't think it's a one to one. Yeah, you're looking at a change that probably took months yeah. of transition time. Uh, if you're interested in any kind of game dev, uh, Double Fine put out a documentary on YouTube that's free to watch called Psych Odyssey, which is like them making Psychonauts 2 from from raw cloth to finished product. And it's it's awesome. Um, and you see how how slowly development actually rolls. Um, but yeah, I it, that definitely feels like something that was long in the mix. Um, it does feel like I, I'm going to be sad to see Joe go. I feel like he was kind of like. Yeah. Um, on the team, uh, whenever I saw his face, it's like, oh, I want to hear what this guy says. <laughs> like I, like I feel like he he's kind of reasonable, and he was he was very much uh, a face for um, for the community. Um, now, whether that's going to continue under Tyson, if Tyson, um, it, it like is more communicative or communicative. Um, than, than Joe. Well, is, we've yet to see, but um, I don't know. It just it, there's there's reasons why we don't have as much contact with Des with Bungie as a developer anymore. <laughs> and but it's always it was always great to see Joe, kind of show up and be like, hey, here's what's going on, or hey, we messed up. Here's a PVP strike team. <laughs> like, uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? Before we uh, close out the show, no nah, man, I'm I'm super excited. I just wanted to be here and get my hands yeah. on it and play it. A little less than two weeks. Chew it up and hopefully make some content around it and yeah. uh, see what content other people make uh, around it. So I just want to get hands on with it. For sure. Heck yeah! All right, then let's go around the horn and uh, and tell people where they can find you on the internet. D flawless. Let's start with you. Yep, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, streamer, content creator, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. You can find me pretty much everywhere at the D Flawless. Uh, and Thursday nights over on mine, but the main channel will be Captain Robear. We play D and D, something new for me and for the channel. So check that out tomorrow night, nine PM Central. Um, if you have any interest in D and D, but otherwise, stay tuned to uh, the socials for the random. TikTok or meme or something that may go up. I don't announce it. I just post it when whenever <laughs> the inspiration strikes me. So just be on the lookout. Heck yeah. TV, what about you? I'm True Vanguard. You can find me on YouTube. Just type in True Vanguard. That's me. Uh, on Twitch, The True Vanguard. We stream mostly Destiny stuff. But Friday nights is Baldur's Gate night with the wife, and we stream those too. So. Do I just stream that, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's fun because my wife and I are really yin yang. Like I'm family friendly guy uh, on my stream, and then she's like, she's the sailor. I'm like, now I gotta you watch. We are set up for like, there's one door in between my office and hers, so we have a conjoining door. So I'm like, you can't say that. Huh? <laughs> it's like, try to stop me. Try to stop me. I love it. I love it. And she it's places awesome. a bard, so she's all like mouthy, you know. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you be? <laughs> Love it. Uh, Pidge, where can people yes. find you, sir? Uh, you can find me twitch.tv forward slash pigeon, P I G I triple N. Uh, out with that, you'll find me commenting and posting on Twitter slash X. Uh, that's also at pigeon with an underscore. Um, anywhere else, you can get involved uh, via stream or Twitter if you're interested. 